Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to day two of Samsung Developer Conference and this technical spotlight session. My name is Edward Choi. I'm a corporate vice president of Global Strategic Alliances with Samsung. I'm really excited to be kicking off this session on how Cisco and Samsung is working together to unlock the power Wi-Fi 6. We're lucky to have a guest from Cisco to walk us through the technology and the collaboration. And, but first, let me touch on the partnership we have between Samsung and Cisco. As you know, we are leaders in our respective industries. Samsung is a global leader in mobile technologies. And you've heard this morning during the keynote that our focus is around CBRS, 5G, Wi-Fi 6. And we're leveraging our defense-grade security baked into all of our devices through a platform called Knox. And we're really proud of the way we approach our solution. We configure, design our mobile devices for the need of the business, and the approach is what we call fit-for-purpose design. Now, with Cisco, it, they are the global leader for enterprise networking and communication technology, and we all know that all the business choose Cisco for all what they need around collaboration, communication, and networking. And together, between Cisco and Samsung, we're innovating, delivering new solutions to truly unlock new use cases accelerate underperforming use cases for all the business worldwide. And to touch on that, early this year, we announced at the S10 Unpacked event to the world that Samsung and Cisco are partnering to be the very first mobile device to be Wi-Fi 6 enabled. And since then, we've been very busy. Our engineers have been working together on how do we continue to improve the user experience on Wi-Fi 6. So today we can say now we're we not only the first device to be Wi-Fi 6 enabled, and today we're still the best user experience for Wi-Fi 6. And to tell us a little bit more about that, I have a special guest, the CTO of Mobile Access from Cisco. Please welcome Matt McPherson. Thanks, Ed, and really appreciate the time, actually, to get here and talk about some of the new technologies that we're working together uh, between the companies. So it's uh, really, a, I think, an exciting time in the industry, isn't it? We see all these changes that are happening. We see all this press around what 5G technologies, and now we have Wi-Fi 6 coming out, and we even these next generation things like CBRS, and what does it all mean? What does it mean to the enterprise, and what does it mean when we want to provide the best possible service wherever we are? And what are some of those fundamental building blocks to achieving just that? So what I thought I'd start with is just to show you just the magnitude of some of the things that are happening in the industry. You know, it's, it's amazing to think, you know, we think about Wi-Fi, we tend to use it where we go, but we've actually gotten to the point now that we expect Wi-Fi. When you go to a hotel, you expect Wi-Fi. You go to a coffee shop, you expect Wi-Fi. And guess what, in between, all those places where you're using Wi-Fi, what do you have? You have this ubiquitous technology of LTE and now 5G and 5G new radio. So what does it mean to connect all of these things together? So these are some of the things that we're working on with Samsung to really provide that next generation experience. Do you know, if you just go back a couple of years, just go back to 2017, did you know that there was over 124 million Wi-Fi hotspots on the planet? 124 million. Now you go forward a couple of years, go to 2022, there's, oh, there's over half a billion Wi-Fi hotspots on the planet. That's huge. You know what that means? The network is part of our everyday life. There, can you think of a day that you haven't connected to the network, where you haven't taken a smart device like a Samsung Galaxy S10 and done your work, talk to your wife, connect with your, with your kids at college or at home. Look, this, this is how we get work done. This is how we live our personal lives today. And it's really driven by that network connectivity. But what's just as important? Well, what's out in that end device? And how well does it work with the network? And so these are the things that we're really looking at as we go forward. In fact, you know what's interesting? If you look at this other analytics, Cisco puts out these things um, every year on how traffic is used on, on the network and which paths that these uh, technologies are taking. And what you see here is that even these mobile devices, 
when you're connecting to the network, when you're connecting to that next generation of cloud services, guess what? You're hitting Wi-Fi over 80% of the time. Over 80% of the traffic is going through Wi-Fi. That's a lot. So we have these dependencies on these networks to work and to work well. So we're going to talk a little bit about what that next generation of technology are and what some of these next generation use cases are. In fact, it, it's interesting. When we look at those numbers, you know, you don't have to go back. You see, I got quite a bit of gray here. You know, if you look at, so, so we've been doing Wi-Fi for a long time. When we first started doing Wi-Fi, I thought it was pretty cool if I could take my laptop on my back porch and be connected to the network. And hey, wasn't that neat, you know? And you know, now, you know what we're doing? We're installing complete enterprises that use nothing but Wi-Fi. Telepresence is on Wi-Fi. Your laptop is on Wi-Fi. Your smart device is on Wi-Fi, right? So this, this is a pretty big change. And when you look at the numbers that I was just articulating, you know, when we look at the fact that there's over 14 billion devices smart mobile devices out there that are leveraging Wi-Fi that we're adding 4 billion devices a year into the Wi-Fi ecosystem. And, and we see things like IoT, and guess what? They're just starting the ramp, right? You go back two years, we added 3 billion a year. A year later, we're adding 4 billion. What is this going to turn into? And what is this connectivity going to turn into? And how do we facilitate that? So when it comes to the next generation of services and making this interface reliable, getting a consistent delay characteristic, getting consistent bandwidth and throughput. You know what has to happen? Those network vendors like Cisco have to work with these dominant players like Samsung. And so we can, by using this next generation of technology, really bring those things to bear. And by the way, you know, oftentimes when I talk to enterprise, I'll ask them, do you have a mission critical service? And you know what every enterprise says? Yes, they do. So do you want to be able to prioritize that type of activity? Think about healthcare, heart monitors, injection pumps, you know, all these different things. Are, is that mission critical? Yeah, I would, I would say that's pretty mission critical. Going to manufacturing, controlling robot arms, mission critical? Yeah, pretty mission critical. But even as you go to carpeted enterprise, you can almost talk to any customer and say, do you have applications that you'd really want to prioritize over that network. And guess what? Every one of them says they do because it directly relates to their business. And that's what we're about, right? Driving business and driving that end user experience to something that, to new heights that we haven't had before. So let's talk about what's the big deal. So I'm, I'm assuming that everybody here has heard about Wi-Fi 6. Certainly we made the big announcement with Samsung as the first major player really to implement these chipsets. And you know, as, as you get into these new technologies, there's some things that you just expect. Well, it's Wi-Fi 6, right? So it's faster than Wi-Fi 5, right? Okay, we expect that. But you know what a lot of people don't realize is that Wi-Fi 6 is very different, built from the ground up, even at the lower layers, to be an improved protocol. What that means is all previous versions of Wi-Fi were based on OFDM, and the really no ability to really schedule that air interface. With Wi-Fi 6 and the fact that it's based on OFDMA, which by the way, is also what 5G is based on, right? So we're learning from each other on how to improve these network technologies. What this means is that you can get that, that expected experience, that expected de delay characteristic. So we can certainly increase the overall throughputs. And you've heard lots of numbers tossed out there um, but at least, you know, two, four plus times better improvement in throughput. Um, and, it, and of course, the higher density as well. Cisco does some of the biggest networks on the planet. It, you often see us, whether, whether it be the large soccer stadiums or whether it be a Super Bowl or whether it be Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, where we literally connect the whole city. Um, we do some of the biggest networks on the planet. And so we see this, this increase in the number of users that have to be on the network, um, which is really critical. Um, to um, the success, I think, in implementing this, this next generation. And we talked a little bit about reduced latency. You know, as you add additional devices to 802.11n or AC, which are previous generation technologies, and the density goes up, do you know that if you get over 50% utilization, the protocol starts to get less efficient and you get less throughput? Not so with Wi-Fi 6 
because you can schedule that resource and now you can drive the utilization much higher with a much lower delay characteristic. So what do we do together? You know, it's, you know, I just said, you know, look, the Wi-Fi 6 specification uh, was very much different than previous generations, much more sophisticated than in the past, but in sophisticated in ways that actually simplify the user experience and your ability to deliver that as an IT department, which I think is really important. But we not only wanted to do the standard at, at you know, in working with Samsung, we wanted to go above and beyond the standard to what we call standards plus. So first, let's talk about the standard. Do you know that when a big new standard comes out, what happens is engineers read these standards, and one engineer interprets the standard this way, and one engineer interprets it this way, and then we try to connect devices, and we kind of go, whoops, right? That's why we started working with Samsung well before the release of our APs, well before the release of the Galaxy S10, so that we could actually experience and look at how these things were implemented so that we didn't do this out at the customer. When it was time for these to release, we did this. And we found that there was over 60 areas where we interpreted the specification different that we found in the lab and, and we could fix and make reliable so that we didn't do this but did this. And this is why it's so important for, for, for two big companies like this to come together so that we can produce that better experience. So that's coming together and we're starting to see some of these standards plus capabilities as well. So look, LTE has been working on scheduling algorithms for 10, 15 years and beyond in order to optimize those protocols. And that knowledge base is going into 5G. Now Wi-Fi 6 has the scheduling capability. And so now we're starting to pour all those resources into scheduling and capabilities as well. And guess what? We learn from that 5G community and we learn by working these things together. And what happens is that it gets better and better and better as time goes on so that we can make most efficient use of it. So we'll talk about some of those things and some of the practicality as well. And by the way, it's one thing. You saw the guys all sitting in the lab and they were smiling because it worked. <laughs> it's always good when the engineers are smiling. Right? But, the, but what we also did is we said, hey, we need to test this in real environments. So what we did is we, we went into um, John Wayne Airport. And we said, okay, this is very dense. Can we actually see some of those gains? And guess what? We did. Right? We go into these other big environments that I'm talking to. We, we did the, the Galaxy S10 launch event. We did Mobile World Congress Barcelona. We did Cisco Live. Cisco Live has over 40,000 attendees. We did Cisco Live, and you know what we did is we implemented some of these technologies that we jointly did together. So by the way, it's great that we have Wi-Fi 6 on the standard, but you know what? We've done some things that are beyond the standard too, and this just gives you an idea of some of the areas that we're working on. So for example, we have this technology that's called open roaming. Now today, when you go in and you get in a Wi-Fi network, when you came to this event, you probably went and you had to put in a, a the, you had to pick the SSID, you had to go in and you had to put in a password, right? Well, you know what we're doing with Samsung that's really cool is this new technology called open roaming. It's based on Passpoint or Hotspot 2.0, which means that Samsung participating as an identity holder, because every device has an identity on it. One identity is your SIM. Another identity is the Samsung, because you log into Samsung to get your profiles and stuff to do your backups, et cetera, right? That's another identity. And now we can use those identities on your phone to automatically connect to Wi-Fi. So think about that. You go to the airport, you just connect. You go to the hotel, you just connect. You go to any public venue, you just connect, right? And this is a very strategic change in what we're used to when we're working with Wi-Fi. So we're leading the industry with some of these capabilities to really bring these things home. When's the last time you went to a portal to connect to your LTE? When's the last time you had to go to a connection manager and pick which network you wanted to connect to? You don't have to do it. Why do we have to do it on Wi-Fi? So we're working on moving an industry to this new type of experience so that guess what? We can have both of these networks available to us all the time. And what does that mean as you go indoors? your sessions can move to Wi-Fi. 
as you go outdoors, you can move from Wi-Fi to LTE, and you can maintain that connectivity all the time. So we're going to show it to you. We're going to show it to you, some of the things that we're doing um, on how we make that work. Now, this is a live demo. Uh, you know, we're, we're not going about this in, in such a way that, uh, you know, we're, we're spoofing anything, but we're going to actually show you what happens when, um, when we start to do this technology together and we do something that really exercises the network in a, in a very strong way, and that's what collaboration services, right? So Ed's going to inter in introduce a very, a very special, special person. Uh, is right over here. All right. Can she see me now? Yep. She's showing up oh, over there. Oh, there you go. Amy, how are you? Can you hear us? Loud and clear, Ed. Awesome. Listen, I got a few friends here who want to say hi to you. And uh, and I'll turn the camera around. Say hi there to Amy you. Chang, everybody. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Amy is the executive vice president of collaboration business worldwide for Cisco. And she's very excited to have her here with us. Amy, anything you want to say to the friends in the room here? Well, I'm so excited to be here with you today. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Well, listen, we are having a fabulous week here at Samsung Developer Conference, day two. We touched on a tremendous amount of collaboration with Samsung and Cisco, and we're really excited to have you with us via WebEx, Matt here with us in person, and I know you might have seen it, we just dropped the press release between Samsung's collaboration with Cisco with our DeX and WebEx, so we're very excited with this partnership. We are insanely excited, too. Excellent. Well, listen, I know you're busy, so we'll let you go and say bye to everyone. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> what, a, what a fantastic Thank you. day to get to spend. Yeah, so Amy, so I just wanted to ask you, you know, we just have a couple minutes left, but um, so, so here we are. So, so I just want to make sure everybody realized what just happened. So we started a WebEx on this Samsung Galaxy S10, and the WebEx was right here on the display. And then what we did is we connected it to an HDMI, and we threw it up on the screen. So now what you can do, and, and I, have a, yeah, <laughs> I have a keyboard here that's connected to Bluetooth. I have a mouse that I was just controlling the environment. So now I have a complete, not only mobile experience, but a complete desktop experience. There you go. So I could have been in the car, I could have been talking to Amy on the way to work, I could have been in the train, and as I go into my office, when I, when I got into the office, I have a much better screen in my office, I plug it in and boom, there it is, and I, I never interrupted the experience. I moved between LTE and Wi-Fi, all this technology that I'm talking about, and we brought it all to bear. The network, the device, and guess what? The collaboration services working all across it. So Amy, did you want to say, I mean, Amy runs all collab at, at, at Cisco. Did you want to, did you want to highlight any uh, collaboration service uh, points? I do. It's such a good example of what two companies like Samsung and Cisco can do together to really bring unified collaboration to mobile, right? And make that just such a smooth and easy experience and just seamless. So you're seeing calling and messaging and meetings brought together into one unified user experience. And that's what users deserve, right? That's what they've deserved for some time now. And they, we finally all together get to bring it to them. And we could not be more excited about that. And you'll see through kind of the Samsung platform that partnership together bring cognitive capabilities into this, this new version as well. So people in company insights, and now with our acquisition of Voicea on the Cisco side, advanced speech recognition and real-time just um, notation and real-time translation as well. So we can't wait. It's going to be a very exciting year. So, so Amy, thank you so much. And, and you know, it's, it's, it's kind of amazing, isn't it, when you see these technologies come together? Because here we have it WebEx. Is, and it affects so many and just wonderful users, like hundreds of millions, if not billions. So oh, it's, it's, it's really incredible. I mean, here we have WebEx out in the cloud, right. which we're connected to. We're going through a Wi-Fi network in order to get out into the cloud. We're connecting the device to a screen. And so we've got DeX, we've got WebEx, we've, right. we've got Android. Right. And, and all the applications you want to use. And all the applications that you, you that, that you want to <laughs> use while you multitask. Now, I wanted to point out one more thing is that guess what? All this has open APIs. 
Yep. It all has open APIs. So if you want to integrate these types of services into your own applications, you can. And you can start connecting some of these dots together as well to really offer that next generation experience across a much broader set of applications. So I look, I know this creativity is out there in the audience. I know that this is a developer's conference. And, and we can only imagine Our what favorite you guys conferences. do. Our favorite conferences. That's right. That's right. So I know they're giving us the hook. Amy, thanks again for coming and joining us. Thank you for having me, Ed and Matt. Thank you. Take care. And folks, if you, later. <laughs> if you have any questions, please do stop by the, uh, the B2B zone the, uh, at the uh, tech space. And we'll have a lot of engineers there answering any questions you have. You can actually test drive our application and learn more about it. And please do remember to rate this event, this session, and enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. All right.